So in this video we're gonna create our first design, this very dot letter C logo that was uh, very trendy for a while and I'm gonna show you almost all symbols, tools during the creation of this logo. So let's start with a new document, Ctrl N or Command N to create a new document. I'm gonna size this document with 1920 by 1080, click create. And first of all, we need to show the grid. To, so Control Quote or Command Quote to show the grid. Control Shift Quote or Command Shift Quote to snap to the grid. I can. We can also find these options here. View, show the grid, snap to the grid. And I also want to show you my grid settings. So go to the Edit Preferences, Quads and Grids. I have this 160 pixels in between the most prominent lines in my grid and I have the number of subdivisions set it to 8. So I have this 8 tiny cells in between my grid lines. Click OK. Grab your ellipse tool, click L and start drawing your ellipse holding Alt and Shift key or Option and Shift key. Very nice. We need to create this circle that occupies 4 large squares on half a uh, width of 320 pixels. Click on the slash to get rid of the stroke and navigate to stroke weight and set it to 100 points. Very nice. Now go to the stroke panel and choose this option align stroke to center. It distributes uh, stroke equally from inside and outside and now we need to also round the caps of our strokes. It's round the edges of our future letter C. So now let's create it. First of all Ctrl R command D to show the rulers. Grab your vertical ruler and place it in around the center of this semicircle on your right. Keep selected your circle. Grab your scissors tool or click C and slice this path in the intersection with your right. Delete this path. It will open the counter of our letter C and create the aperture. Now we need to create a space that we're gonna populate. And in order to do that, go to the object and path and outline stroke. Swap fill and stroke. We have this free space that we're gonna populate, but before we do that, I'm gonna divide the space onto three equal parts. Grab your guides, vertical guides, and place it somewhere like this. And why I want to do that? Because I want to visually create the guidelines that helps me to distribute the size of my dots. I'm gonna gradually decrease the size of these dots from the right to the left. And I also make these areas of my letter C more densely populated with the dots and this more sparely populated. Now let's create our symbols. In order to do that, grab your ellipse tool or click A and create this tiny symbol that occupies only one cell in our grid. Give it a fill, change it to any color you want. This small tiny circle should have a width and height set it to 20 pixels. Now grab this circle and navigate to your symbols panel. If you can find your symbols panel, go to the Windows Symbols. Now as it cursor is changed, release your left mouse button key. It will open the symbols option dialog box. And here we need to set all values to the default. The difference between dynamic symbols and static symbol I will explain you in the upcoming videos. And uh, these export type differences, well, it doesn't matter if you work only inside Adobe Illustrator, whether you use movie clip or graphic, but it uh, do matter if you decided to import this symbol to, this, to the Adobe Flash. If you prepare your artwork to the Adobe Flash, always choose movie clip. So click OK. 
Now delete this instance. Select your letter C and activate uh, something that calls Draw Inside Tool. In order to do that, click Shift D twice or select this icon Draw Inside. What it does, it creates a clipping mask from our letter C shapes and now all objects that are not within this mask will be invisible for you. I'm creating this circle and I, if I push this to this letter C area, it's now visible. So let's start with our symbols panel tools. To find your symbols panel tools, grab and go to this symbol sprayer tool, can sprayer can icon that right below your airdropper tool. Hold left mouse button key long enough to open this menu and navigate to the right edge of your aim menu. Release your left mouse button key to detach this panel. We're gonna start with the symbol sprayer tool. It sprays all of our symbols. Make sure that your symbol is selected. And if you double click on it, you will open the symbol tools options. First tool is a pretty self-explanatory. It defines the a diameter of this circle around your symbols and you can control it with the square bracket key both if you click left square bracket key it's decrease the diameter of your tool and if you use right square bracket key it's increase the diameter next option that you can see here is intensity uh, in case of a sprayer Tool. It's the speed of spraying your symbols. If you set it to maximum letter T, it will be created very quickly. And if you set it to 1, it will be very, very low. Not nice the difference in the speed. I'm going to set our intensity to around 7. And symbols density defines the amount of space in between the symbols. If you set it to 1, symbols will gonna be very sparely populated. If you set it to 10, they will almost overlap, overlap with each other very densely. I'm gonna set it also to 7. So let's start with our symbol spray tool. Just uh, hold left mouse button key and spray your symbols. I'm gonna place it here more densely as well as here. Here more sparely. And here even more space in between our symbols. So very nice. Now navigate to the third icon from top. It's Symbol Scrunchy Tool. By default, this um, symbol controls the amount of space in between your symbols in the symbol set. So by default, if you click on the symbols, it reduces the space. As you can see, now all of your symbols become close to each other. And if you hold Alt or Option key, it's makes absolutely opposite. It's increase the amount of space. So I probably want to increase a bit here and there and decrease increase the space here. Next tool is a symbol shifter tool. Symbol shifter tool is the second from top. If you grab this tool you've been able to pull the symbols in the direction you want. So it's kind of allows you to shift the symbols in different directions. But if you hold Alt or Option key, it allows you to push your symbols. So next tool is the Symbol Size tool. And we're gonna use it across this design. So navigate to the fourth icon from top. By default, it's increase the size of your symbols in the symbol set, and I'm gonna increase it right here. 
and here, increase it also probably here and there, and hold Alt, you will decrease the size of your symbols, and I'm gonna decrease it like so. So, we're probably ready to pull the color with our symbol stainer tool, it's third icon from the bottom, but before we do that, let's create our color palette, and the best way to do that using symbol Windows Swatches. So go to the Windows Swatches and navigate to this icon from the bottom near the Swatches library. It's Adobe Color icon. Click on it, navigate to create. And now we have this color rule, this very interesting icon from on the right. Select, select it and click on this compound color. It allows you to create very interesting color palette and I probably avoid to pale colors as well as uh, to uh, yellow colors. So very nice, I'm happy with this uh, color palette and I want to save it. You can name it on the bottom of your this dialog box. Let's see my C symbols and also click save, choose the place that you're gonna save them. I'm gonna save them on the my library, click save and now navigate to my teams top and as you can see we have this color palette here. Click on these three dots to open the drop down menu and from drop down menu select this option add to swatches. And voila, we have this color palette. You can close your team and select swatches. Select your symbol stainer tool. Make sure that your symbol set is selected. Decrease the size with the square bracket key of your tool and start putting the color here and there. As you can see, it's gradually paint the color and if you use your alter option key it will rob the color from the symbol. Now I'm gonna create this vivid green, add some colors here. You can see how easily we can recolor all of these symbols and now I want to gradually decrease the opacity of my symbol set and I want to make the most opaque symbols here and most transparent symbols here in this area. So in order to do that grab your symbol screener tool. Symbol screener tool is the second from bottom. Double click on it and decrease the intensity to around 2 or even Oh, let's say 3, ok. Increase the diameter and click few times on your dots here, click more here. Very nice. Now we are ready to select letter C and release the clipping mask. After doing this you can delete your letter C shape and navigate, select your symbol set, navigate to the object, expand appearance and it creates a group of individual symbols. They are still symbols, you can still modify them with the symbols panel. But in our case I simply want to ungroup them and delete unnecessary symbols that was exceeding the space of my letter C. I also want to rearrange some of the symbols. Well, I'm pretty happy with the result. 
This is how we can use almost all symbols tools to create this meaningful design and in the next video I'm gonna show you how to use symbol spinner tool.